Hey, what's up everybody? It's Elijah here. I just wanted to give an update. I just got in the shop um, just about 30 minutes ago and got everything fired up. And uh, just want to take a minute and walk you guys around and show you what I've got here um, to handle in-house. And um, also, uh, I've got so much work to do. This place has been closed up for two years. And I've been coming and going from Panama City. And as I've been needing things, I've just been coming over here and picking through the shop and getting what I need. And um, I, I'm a little embarrassed to show my shop like this because it's never been in this condition. But... It's going to take me probably a full week to HEPAVAC and antimicrobial wipe everything down and uh, get everything back to standard, which is where everything was at. So let me just take a minute and show you um, a little bit of, of what I have here. I'm going to start off with, uh, let, well, let's just start off with the, with the watch repair station. So um, this is the bench that I originally started with. It's an old secretary's roll top bench that I had custom made. Um, I put the risers on it to raise it up to height and um, as you can see I've got all my books um, all my gemstone identification charts and everything like that in there um, all my gravers all my uh, mixed alloy for casting doing my castings um, here's some of the stuff that I've custom made and uh, I, I got all kinds of rings that I've done and uh, these are all uh, 925 silver. Actually, these are 0.995 silver. And this is one I made for my son here. Um, here's some of the bracelets that I can do. I can cast in-house. So basically how the casting works is um, this is a Romanoff wax injection system. And this is a full of wax here. It heats up. I've got pressure going to it with the compressor down here. And um, I run probably about 4 PSI. And um, there's my temperature gauge to make sure my, my wax is melted down before I do injections on it. And basically how it works is uh, you have molds like this. This is a grenade. And um, basically you, you take something like this. And I've got about, if I had to estimate, I've probably got about a thousand of these rubber molds here. And I've got probably another... 4,000 waxes. This is all, that's all rubber molds for ladies' earrings, pendants, gents' rings. Um, you can cast in silver, gold, brass, bronze, any, any metal really. Um, I can cast it. Um, and we can, I can do plating if you wanted something silver and do a gold plate on it, or if you wanted brass and do a gold or silver plate, I can do that for you. Um, but anyway, so, uh, you basically take, uh, mold like this and you close it up and when it's hot you press it right there inject it <clears throat> this has got a little adapter on it where you push it in and it pushes the wax out you fill the mold up you let it cool and you open it up and you end up with something like this these are all waxes that I was playing around with that's a pretty pretty cool ring um, it'll hold a pretty nice size stone I got all kinds of stuff here. I've got so much work to do, um, getting this place put back into shape. And um, here's your uh, jewelry lubrication, uh, wax injections mold. There's your vacuum coat for cleaning off your waxes before you sprue them up. It's a picture of my son. I have all my conversion table charts here, my alloy conversions. And uh, so it helps me mix the proper alloy together to get everything. Um, let's see here. So when I originally set this place up, I put this TV in here. I've got a nice little Bose stereo to have some nice music playing when I work in here. And, um, what I did is I added this Bush and Lom microscope here and I retrofitted it so it would hold my LCD screen. And I have all my photo docs here. And when this is all set up, I have... A foot control that goes down here so that while I'm working here's one of my virgin mats I know y'all been seeing my white bench without a green mat um, I do use them I just didn't have one in Panama City and just didn't feel like wasting the money on one because uh, I know I wasn't gonna keep the bench and uh, but anyway so y'all seen the new bench that I got it's a 1940 solid oak 
uh, master watchmaker's bench. So this is going to get probably relocated to another room in here. Um, and then my uh, watchmaker's bench is going to go in here. And um, this is going to get moved into another room so I don't have all the debris and dust from the polishing. Even though I've got a roll top here so I can pull this over when I'm buffing and polishing. Run my air scrubbers that I've got in here to clean the air out before I work on the watches again. I set everything up right. Um, I've, I run three different layers of lights. So I've got my UVs up here. Um, and then I have my fluorescence here that I run. And um, here's one of my uh, master metalsmith, goldsmith benches that I've got. And um, I run uh, this light here along with the fluorescence. And uh, I've got six of these Ford and Flex shafts. This one here I run a double on. So I can have easy access to changing out my bits. And um, as you can see, I mean, it's, it's loaded up. I've got, I've got a acetylene torch, a platinum torch. Um, I've got my acetylene and oxygen uh, and propane bottles down here that I run. I, I basically pull this over to this station over here, which is my casting station. And um, I do all my metal uh, melting here. I've got an old vintage Rayvac system here that I, that I use for my investments in vacuuming. I've also got... A really cool, sweet uh, VacuCast Junior setup here that I can run two different casting stations if I want. And um, I've got a nice Naycraft uh, burnout oven here. Um, I've got probably 30 or 40 of these flasks here that I use to do my burnout process. And um, I, can, I ended up getting a great deal on all this stuff. Um, I think I paid like 600 for this it was basically brand new it sat down in some guy's basement if you open this thing up the pump looks it's immaculate same thing for this one here um, but i had sucked some metal up in my line here and so now my uh, my vacuum doesn't work no my uh, my pressure doesn't work on this one so i have to use this one to do my um my, my bubbling over for my flask to get all the air bubbles out and then I'll move everything over here to do my casting. I had to convert the, the lines back here with some uh, rubber hose. So I basically have, um, let me see if I can find it. I probably can't, you probably can't see it here. Um, but I had to retrofit it to where I've got basically a shut off here that I run and that way I can switch it over so I can move in between the two stations. I've got this really cool combination unit here that I've invested in in case I ever want to do gold grills um, or platinum grills for somebody's teeth. Um, it's a really cool vacuum unit uh, and mixing for uh, doing dentine work. And uh, I haven't never used it. I just bought it just in case I ever wanted to do it. I've got a bead blasting station that I use for cleaning up my cases before I run them over to the plating system. I've got another compressor down here that I run to clean my crystals off and to spray everything down uh, when I get done with cleaning everything. And um, let me uh, swap you over here. It's a full stock of plating solutions, cleaning solutions, Tiva Bright and Tiva Clean. There's my plating unit that I've got. Really nice Hoover and Strong unit. And um, I've got all my electrodes rods here. And uh, there's all my plating jars here. Everything's got to get cleaned out. Um, that's all nickel plate there. And uh, that's a copper plate, 14 karat yellow gold plate. And um, I, I think, let me see what was in here. Oh, uh, that's your Midas acid dip for cleaning everything. I only run uh, filtered water uh, when I'm cleaning everything. There's my acid copper. I believe that's my gold stripper. Yeah, that's my gold stripper there. Gold solution plating. <clears throat> Both of those are side eye products. Um, I don't even know if you can even get that stuff anymore. Um, so yeah, there's I, I, I've got so much work to do. Um, so basically, here's uh, here's my my full room shot. I've custom made. It's way too big and way too bulky for, for doing jewelry. Um, I don't know why I, I made it so big, but I, I did something really cool with it. I actually burnt this all with a torch and did, did, a, did a light stain on it and came up with this really cool finish, and it's super smooth and soft. Um, there's my full set of batteries for my quartz stuff. I've got a full setup in here for doing um, 
uh, quartz movements, and um, I can't think of the name of the watches uh, off the top of my head right now. I'm just exhausted. Um, but anyways, I've got a full, I've got so many parts. So what I did is um, I was really good friends with a guy who was in the jewelry business in Atlanta and did um, custom goldsmithing and specialized in vintage watch restorations for 20 years. And that's where I acquired all this equipment from. Um, I ended up buying them out uh, when he retired and um <clears throat> turned out to be a pretty good investment i didn't even know what i was getting into at the time i just wanted to have something as a backup in case i ever needed to transition into something um if i ever lost my main source of income and uh, over the last four years i've just invested a lot of time into learning um the trade and getting my skills uh to where I, I felt like it was strong enough to start taking in repairs and, and people's watches and it seems to be going pretty good um but anyways I've, I've got tons of tons of stuff man here's here's an old rolex submariner here's an old a11 dial which I got some A11s that, that need uh, dials done on them. I've got all original. Here's some original Intercar dials, old Hamilton dials, original. Here's an old Royce. I've got probably two or 3,000 dials that, I've, that I have here in stock um, that I've kept. Um, and then the same thing over here. This is just some leftover stuff that Rock had. And uh, this is all parts for all kinds of stuff. I got... Hamiltons, Rolexes, uh, Omegas. I, I've, I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Um, if I ever need parts, I always come in here first um, before I actually go to my part suppliers and um, and try to find something. Um, it's just always nice to have. Um, here's my uh, some of my jewelry cases that I've got. Um, I've got these two here. And I've got a total of six of these that I'll, I'm going to start having on my projects in. And I've got a full bathroom over here to the left. And um, there's more of my glass cabinets. This was all clean and nice and tidy. But you can see over the last two years it's just become kind of a storage area. And a place that I come and pick through whenever I need something. Um, but I mean there's more dials in there. There's off just to all kinds of parts. Um, old Spadel bracelets, leather straps. That right there is full of uh, old vintage cases, stainless steel cases um, for me to pick through if I ever want to um, put something together. And uh, so anyways, I just wanted to kind of show you guys what I'm dealing with here. And, um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a tough transition, to be honest with you, uh, going from a 500,000 condo uh, to back over here where I'm at, but um, this is where I need to be um, in order to, um, you know, provide the quality of work that you guys are investing on these watches. And um, I think it's a smart move, and I'm ready for, you know, the next 25 years of um, being in a really good business and providing a good service and, and, and being able to um, really, you know, start putting my name out there. Um, and, and building a really strong reputation. Um, I've got a lot invested in this shop and, um, over the last probably seven years, I've been piecing it together. Here's some of my casting charts that I use for my temperatures. Cause if, you know, if you're not doing it every day, it's very easy to forget. There's my different, uh, torch flame sizes, temperatures, my mixing charts for my investment powders. And um, I, I most of the time only use uh, random and red off ultra vest castings, uh, but now um, you know you've got the um, the the the, uh, the wax printing machines, uh, which I haven't used those waxes yet, so I'm probably gonna have to start investing in that because now uh, there's so many wax patterns that you can get now because of these 3D printers, um, and I'm super stoked about getting some of those molds. <clears throat> because it's just a huge variety of or variety of um, different patterns um, that you know you just can't put the time into carving. I've I've got I've got all the wax carving tools here. I, I've I've done custom work before, 
Um, but you know, to be honest with you, with all the watch work that I've got going on, it's so much easier to try to find a really cool pattern, um, that I can cast and, uh, be able to, um, you know, make something cool out of it if you want. Um, but anyways, I, it's kind of a long video. I know I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I, I just, it's seriously going to take me a week just getting this place back together. I mean, just look at my drawers. Look at the amount of, you know, debris um, on, on my bench, you know, from polishing and sanding. Um, I think the last time I used this bench is when I uh, did those two vintage Seiko diver restorations where I had to do all the hand polishing and hand brush finish on everything. And um, I'm stocked, man. You know, I've, I've got everything and anything I possibly need, diamond bits, files, um, I mean, I'm, I'm loaded up. I've got so much stuff in, in this shop. And, um, so anyways, um, uh, stay tuned and wish me luck. I've got a, I've got a good strong week ahead of me. Um, getting this place whipped back into shape. Um, you know, I've, over the last year I've acquired even more tools. I've got, oh gosh, I don't know, probably four or 5,000 dollars worth of tools that I've acquired over the last year, not including the watchmakers bench and the a complete gs library of crystals that i just invested in i got over four thousand crystals i've got to get in here a total of six cabinets um that i'm probably going to clear some of this stuff out and put in here and i'll probably do my buff and polish station in here um and have all my watch my watch and my jewelry and my casting in in these areas my plating in these two areas here um, this is a really cool place. I, I, I actually lived in this, in this place, um, for probably two years before I bought the entire property. I've got a total of three rentals here and that's where I'm staying at now is one of my rentals. Cause I've got people staying in my main house, um, about 60 feet away from, um, my shop here. And, um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm staying in a little 300 square foot studio right now, um, until I make this transition and get everything figured out. So anyways, wish me luck. I appreciate your, all y'all support and your patience, um, during this transition. Um, I know it's been tough on a couple of you guys, uh, but you've been waiting for about three months to get your watches back with everything I've had going on and getting delays on shipping and, and then putting your watch together and, it, and it's still not running right and having to do some troubleshooting on it. But uh, just bear with me and I'll, I'm going to get everything, you know, whipped in the shape here and, and, and get everything to where it's supposed to be. So, again, thanks a lot for your support and um, I hope you like my shop. It's pretty cool. Um, I, <laughs> I'm really proud of what I've done here, um, putting this place together. So, anyways, uh, thanks again and um, stay tuned. I'll, I'll see you guys and, and talk to you again here soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.